G'day humans, Chris Stead here. In this video, we're gonna compare everything that has been upgraded in the journey from the Sonos Arc to the Sonos Arc Ultra. Let's dive in. It's been just over four and a half years since the Sonos Arc landed and brought with it quite an excellent soundbar audio experience for TV watches. But if you think about the last you know, four years, there's been a fair bit of change in the way that we consume our multimedia, really. Uh, yes, we had next generation consoles four years ago, but now the average post-COVID human being is watching a lot more cinema-like experiences in their home from the humongous new TVs that we've got, but also just the proliferation of Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, and people making content that actually makes the most of that uh, surround sound experience. So with the Sonos Arc Ultra, which is just about to come out, or probably is out by the time you, uh, by the time you listen to this, Sonos has really done quite a substantial change to its soundbar technology. There's a a number of major tweaks here that are going to provide an experience which is going to be very different and very, very interesting in terms of the way that it enhances the home cinema experience. So in this video, I'm just going to run through them. Now, I, I have got this knowledge directly from Sonos. So I had an opportunity to get a presentation on the Sonos Arc Ultra from the VP of audio at Sonos, Chris Davies, and as well as taking me through the product and not just the Ultra, but he also took me through the new Sub 4. Uh, as, as part of that, I also got an opportunity to interview him. So I was able to ask him a lot of questions, get some back and forth and learn exactly what the differences are uh, between the product that is already in the market or it was in the market, the Arc, and the Arc Ultra. Now, the big, big, big change, and this is the one that's going to make the most amount of difference, is the arrival of Sound Motion. So Sound Motion is very, very interesting. I've done a video specifically detailing it, but as a quick overview, what Sound Motion is, is it's a new transducer technology, a potentially revolutionary transducer technology, and the first kind of major leap we've seen in it in over 100 years, where the Sonos has created a way of getting the same amount of sound out of a piece of hardware that is a third the size of a traditional transducer. And it does this by taking two diaphragms, basically lining them up parallel to each other with uh, magnetic motors on all four corners and aluminum ribs between to create kind of rigidity. And basically as one side moves up, or so one side moves in, the other side moves out. And as that then comes back in, the other side moves out. So you get this kind of, uh, force cancelling effect, and it creates a lot of more space, moves a lot more air, creates a lot more sound. Uh, so you're looking at double the base of the Arc with the Arc Ultra as a result. Uh, but also, as we'll go into in a sec, uh, the, the fact that they've got been able to produce twice the amount of bass from a, from a piece of technology which is a third of the size, uh, it's created a lot more space in that sound bar to do more with other speakers and that's, that's obviously very, very cool. So I'm gonna read you a quote now from Chris Davies is what he said to me. So with the Arc Ultra, there was a full, full architecture overhaul of the original Arc. We went back and reinvented this product on the inside. This was in order to get clearer dialogue, more bass performance, a better spatial experience, and to just bring more to the table. We have doubled the bass performance compared to the Arc. At the 50 to 60 hertz range, we've got six decibels more output. So that's obviously a big change. So the soundbar has the new sound motion technology in it, change number one, and change number two, that's gonna double the bass. Uh, so there's a lot more bass coming out. And I find it really interesting that they've also released a new sub, even though they've also doubled the bass out of the soundbar itself. Uh, but uh, maybe that means that less, less people will have a use case where they need both. So a third notable change between the original Sonos Arc and the Sonos Arc Ultra is it's a lower profile. Now this is obviously helped by the sound motion, that, that smaller new technology. Uh, but despite having a, a smaller profile, uh, you're going to have a longer device. So it's actually longer. And it's important to, I'm gonna explain why in a second, but 
when you're looking at the design of it, it's going to be squatter, longer, and the touch bar at the top, which allows you to control via touch, has been moved to the back of the device out of sight to create a more elegant profile and look. So that's kind of what you're going to notice just at a glance from the design thing. So that is the third change and difference. Now that leads straight into our fourth big upgrade with the Arc Ultra, and that is probably wondering if the sound motion is a smaller piece of tech, why would the bar end up being longer? And that's because that extra space has allowed Sonos to do more with on, on, on its speaker front. So the original Arc had eight woofers and three tweeters in it. Now the Arc Ultra has just the one sound motion woofer because that one woofer can take care of everything, but there's now six mid-rangers and seven tweeters. So overall we've gone from 11 speakers to 14. But the change in sound is a, is a lot more substantial than that because of what that extra space allows. Okay, on to the fifth big upgrade, and that plugs this plugs into those brand new speakers that we've got. So with this extra space and these additional speakers, Sonos has been able to create a whole bunch of new arrays to deliver sound in new directions. So this has kind of a native custom waveguides. Now the Sonos Arc was a 5.1.2 system. The Sonos Arc Ultra is a 9.1.4 system. And I'm going to quote here directly from Chris Davies to explain what he's talking about here and why that is going to create a more immersive sound experience. So starting the quote, we're doing a 9.1.4 render for Atmos content. We have a left, center, and right channels that are directly radiating to the listener. Those channels create a really consistent front sound stage. It's more controlled, so the room itself doesn't have as much as an effect. Then we have left and right wider channels that create an extended width across the front of the room. We have side channels that push even further into the room, and rear channels that pull even further to try and get that sound projected so it feels like something is coming from behind you. We have four height channels, because if you only have two height channels, it collapses the front and back height together. So keeping that separate in terms of renderer allows us to be able to treat those channels separately to create spatial separation between a front and rear height. So you get a sense of sound going front to back. So obviously substantially more going on there in terms of the sound uh, that you're gonna get out of the Sonos Arc Ultra out of, than you did on the Sonos Arc. Upgrade number six. So. One of the things that Chris Davis said to me originally as part of this uh, briefing was we had an intrinsic focus to set, get as much clarity out of the center channel as we possibly can. And basically that's talking to a bigger focus on clear dialogue, which Sonos believes is a really important feature for home seminar moving forward. Now obviously in a movie theater, the place is designed for you know, watching films and sound is balanced right, but at home, there's background noises, you might be having to listen to it really quietly, so there's a lot going on there. So the new architecture, so that allows for tweeters and mid-ranges to be so close together, also allows for just clear dialogue just out of the gate. But there is now a multi-level speech enhancement feature. So originally in the arc, there was just the one speech enhancement. Uh, you just basically toggled it off and on, and now there is three. So at level one, it's just a, basically a little nudge. It just, gives, just enhances the dialogue just slightly. Uh, and it's used if, just to combat some, some background noise or if you, if you listen to it quietly. Level two is the equivalent of what we saw in the Arc 1, but it's been refined uh, so it has less of an impact on the rest of the content you're listening to. But uh, it's kind of you know similar to what we had in the original Arc. Level three pushes that further though and uh, is used for even the more demanding environments or where di dialogue is the total priority. So that is kind of the three stages we now have with the speech enhancement with the Arc Ultra. We only had the one with the Arc. And it's worth no noting as well, I did ask Chris if, you know, what changes are gonna, you're gonna see in the app. And he, you know, he said the only noticeable change that you'll, like the only kind of new thing you'll see in the app with the Arc Ultra is those three tiers of speech enhancement that you can toggle between. Now the seventh upgrade is an interesting one because it relates to the way that, you know, kind of the optimization happens, the true play. Now, it's got true play like we saw, like we've seen across many of the Sonos products. Uh, in fact, most of them I think nowadays. Uh, and it's also got quick tune. So that is going to basically uh, blast out a, a little, 
a little sound and then it's going to listen to itself. This is the set, this is the Arc Ultra. And then based on some machine learning and algorithms and stuff that it knows, it's going to make an approximate, approximate, approximate what your room is like and therefore adjust the sound accordingly. Now, that is available on Android and iOS, but new and available, available only to iOS users at this point is advanced tuning. So that's another level up. And I'm gonna do a separate video just specifically diving into both of these because I've got some, you know, some big quotes from him explaining it all. But the bottom line is what advanced tuning allows you to do is actually not just estimate what your room is like. Sorry, True Play still does its thing, kind of works out what's, what objects are about. Uh, Quick Tune still does its thing and guesses, does an educated guess on what your room is like. And then Advanced Tuning does the same thing, but from the perspective of where you're actually sitting. So if you're, you do this from where you're sitting on the couch and give, you're feeding more information basically to the, to the equalization, uh, EQ optimization. Uh, so that's an extra thing that you can now get with the Ultra, but only if you're on iOS. And I did say, like, what's the go? Like, when, like, when, are, we, when are we gonna see these things happen on Android? Because we're still waiting for audio swap as well on Android, and they were just basically like, there's just too much variation in Android devices, and we can't get a consistent signal back. And as a result of that, uh, we just, you know, we just, it just takes so much more time to get it to work. Uh, so I did actually say, are we gonna get at least audio swap active with the arrival of Arc Ultra on Android devices and I was not able to get a confirmation of that, unfortunately. So upgrade number eight is on the sustainability side of things. And we've seen some of us start to do this a little bit uh, over the last few years. We have taken, basically, they've used more screws to put together the device and less adhesive. Now the point of this is to basically mean that you can actually take it apart. So this allows you to do services, Fix, fix it or even remove parts for recycling at a later date. So uh, that's part of their sustainability program. Uh, there's less silicon used in the Arc Ultra. There's halogen free PCB laminates are used. It's 4.7% post consumer plastics, which they actually you know, said, well, we're 4.7% post. And I was like, 4.7 doesn't sound awfully amazing, but uh, they're usually losing some uh, post consumer plastics. Uh, it's 100% recycled packaging at least, and that packaging is actually is 18% uh, smaller than the Arc as well. So they're using it's a it's 100% recycled and they're using less of it. Uh, and also, the, one of the sustainability differences between the Arc and the Arc Ultra is the Arc Ultra uses 20% less idle power consumption as well. So number nine talks to connectivity. So there are two significant changes to the connectivity with the Arc Ultra over the Arc. Uh, the first is that we've got Bluetooth support. So you can now connect directly to the soundbar with a Bluetooth device, uh, which is a handy feature. And it's, it's nice to see, it's, I, I, this is not new to Sonos. Sonos has been introducing Bluetooth on a few of their devices over the last probably two or three years after being very, very uh, inwards looking with the uh, desire to have you use the app, the Sonos app. So Bluetooth support obviously gets you out of the app and you can just you know uh, use it like any other Bluetooth device. Uh, but, you know, um, the Sonos ecosystem is so awesome as an ecosystem, you tend to use the app anyway. But yeah, so you've got Bluetooth connectivity directly to the Arc Ultra. Wi-Fi has also stepped up, so it was Wi-Fi 5 in the Arc. It is now Wi-Fi 6 in the Arc Ultra. Now, this is disappointing to me, because obviously we have 6E, we even have 7. And I did actually ask them like why Wi-Fi 6, it's almost out of date, uh, you know, as of 2024, surely by 25 it is. And um, then basically the feedback was, we started working on the Arc Ultra back when Wi-Fi 6 was all the rage, and <laughs> so we're stuck with it. Uh, and I, I'm not awfully convinced by that answer, to be honest, but yeah, so we've got Wi-Fi 6, so it's definitely a step up, uh, but considering that we've got a lot of products starting to arrive that are Wi-Fi 7, or at least 6E, uh, that is curious to me. And our 10th big change, and I'm not, this is not an upgrade, it's just a change between the Sonos Arc and the Sonos Arc Ultra is the launch price. Now I'm gonna to speak to Australian prices here. 
uh, but I'd say they'd be quite reflective of what we're seeing around the world. But when the Sonos Arc originally launched back in June 2020, it was $14.99 here in Australia. The Sonos Arc Ultra is launching at $17.99. So that's a bit disappointing. I, I, I understand that there's a heck of a lot going on. There's been a lot of upgrades, there's a lot going on, but it's also been a lot of years. And it was a shame that they haven't been able to keep at least to the price of the predecessor. Uh, but uh, it'll be up to you to decide whether or not everything that they've put into this, the previous nine points that I've raised, are worthy enough for the extra $300. Maybe we'll know more once we've had a great time listen to it. So anyway, that's uh, that's 10 things for you to consider about the difference between the Sonos Arc and Sonos Arc Ultra, where you can see all the upgrades, where all the attention's been put into. Uh, substantially different system. Certainly not an iteration. I did actually have a chat to them about why it's not called the Arc 2. Uh, it just seemed bizarre to me that you would I mean, it's obviously not a mid-generation device. It's a significantly new device. So it's worthy of an Arc 2 rather than an Arc Ultra, which to many people might sound like, you know, like when you get a phone or a phone pro, um, but, uh, or a, a, a PS5 and a PS5 Pro, for example, like some sort of mid-gen thing. Uh, but yeah, they didn't actually, the guy I spoke to, Chris Davies, he actually didn't know the answer to that one. So if I find out an answer, I will put it in the comments below. But otherwise, make sure you keep an eye on the channel. I'm going to do quite a bit more content around this particular interview. And also, like I said, I've done one specifically on sound motion. I'll do one on the quick tune versus advanced tune differences as well. And obviously a review once I get more time with this device to put down a final verdict. All right, that's enough for now. I'm Chris Dead. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I'll check you later. Yee-hoo!